Netflix's Daredevil has one of the most ruthless TV villains ever, with Kingpin, played fantastically by Vincent D'Onofrio. Hell, as a boy, he truly hammered in how much he hated his abusive father. See what I did there? Even in his full introduction, he smashed someone's head in with a car door just because the guy cock-blocked him from getting with Vanessa on the first date. Can't blame Kingpin there, honestly. Even a crime lord has needs, man. Trying to pull a 10 out of 10 for Addy Bro is a tough task. Obviously, ruthlessly slamming that guy's head with a car door multiple times was a logical way of coping this historic fumble. It's honestly relatable. All seriousness, Kingpin was on demon time throughout the entire show, especially in season three. So let me give you the rundown. Kingpin was fixated on this man who saved him from ambush, Ben Poindexter who later turns out to be Bullseye. And he wants to turn Dex into this weapon for him. For someone with such concrete skills, Dex is super fragile, especially mentally. So the only way to get his full cooperation is by ruining the entire concrete structure of Dex's life. Starting with his job in the FBI and then moving onto his last form of structure, which is Julie, a girl that Dex is fixated with, literally stalking her every day. Disclaimer. Yeah, he isn't all the way there. And a man with a screw loose knows when another man's screw is loose as well. In which in this case, Fisk exploits it. First, he gets the girl that Dex be stalking and moves her into the same spot that where Dex works, which really weirds out Dex because, you know, it's like stalking a baddie's Insta, acting like you'll never ever see this girl in real life. And then it turns out you actually do. And then you actually have to interact with her and you don't know how to do it whatsoever. This is basically the situation, which it inevitably fails for Dex. He basically snitched on himself at this point, and Julie rejects him so hard. It sends Dex down a spiral so far, in fact, that he commits a massacre in a daredevil suit. I'm telling you, man, Dex is on that timing when his head ain't straight. Dex knows that he's spiraling so bad, so for him to stop spiraling out of control, he falls back to the one place of structure he knows, which is Julie. Oddly enough, Dex stalked Julie as a way of structure. It's like a way of searching for a role model. He's not really looking for a romantic partner, he's looking for a role model to look up to, which doesn't make the situation less creepy. It is creepy. But in Dex's point of view, it's a way of coping and a way that he's learned for his whole life. And despite the rocky start, Julie actually agrees to help Dex get his life in order as a sort of therapist role, which actually makes everything seem a little bit better for Dex as he's trying to get better and, oh fuck. Guess who's watching the entire time? Wilson motherfucking Fisk. So seconds later, in one of the most coldest, horrifying scenes in the entire show, he just watches as Julie gets killed by hitmen that he hired and they take her phone and use it to ghost Dex as well while he's at his lowest at this point. Which, looking at it now, this is probably more cold-blooded than the car bashing or killing his father because the scene w felt so distant. It wasn't shot up close to create this dramatic shot of Julie getting her head shot. It was shot as if those hitmen just killed a bug that just wandered onto the floor. It just felt sudden but unimportant and they just moved on with their day like nothing happened. Obviously, in this case, Julie was all a part of Fist's plan as well, but from the way how it was shot, it just felt so distant. That's basically how Fist saw Julie as a minor inconvenience that was killed like she was nothing. And props to the people behind the scenes, because absolutely, they did a fantastic job conveying this distant nature in this scene. And this, the worst part is that Julie seemed like a genuine person and who just wanted to really help people, especially Dex, who I would honestly cut him off if you just kept trying to stalk me. And she knew that he was stalking her, yet he sh she still tried to help. And she was absolutely innocent in the situation. It just makes her murder far more ruthless on Kingpin's part, which considering in season three, Kingpin goes full villain mode. He is on demon time and destroying people's lives left and right just to elevate his own. This really takes the cake as one of his worst moments in the entire show. That's what truly makes him the king of Marvel villains. Make way for the king.